Okay, what we have here is a capacitor with two circular plates. I've turned the capacitor, so we're looking at one of the plates here, and I've charged it, and now I have it just connected to a voltmeter, and you can see I have the voltmeter almost pegged. Now what I'm going to do is lower a dielectric between the plates, and let's watch what happens to the voltage drop across the capacitor. So as the dielectric goes between the plates, you can see that we have a drop in the voltage. And then when I pull the dielectric back out, the voltage recovers. Here's the situation we have with a fixed charge on our capacitor. The charge density on the plates is going to determine the electric field, and assuming negligible fringing fields, we have a uniform electric field intensity inside the plates as shown. Now the voltage drop is going to be minus the integral of E dot dL from the uh, negatively charged plate to the positively charged plate, and because of the uniform electric field intensity, that will just simply be the electric field intensity times the separation of the plates. Now in the experiment, we inserted a dielectric between the plates, and we saw that the voltage drop was reduced. So the plate separation is fixed, so somehow the electric field intensity is being reduced with the insertion of the dielectric. So let's take a look at what happens with the dielectric when placed in an electric field. So here's our model for our dielectric. The circles represent atoms, and the atoms consist of the positively charged nucleus with the cloud of electrons around it. And here I'm assuming that the uh, center of that charge for both the positive and negative charges is in the same place, so the atoms we can model as these little circles that are, are neutral. Now, when we place this dielectric inside our capacitor. The positive plate here will attract the electrons and the negative plate here will repel the electrons or attract the, the nuclei. So what will happen is that the atoms will become distorted. And their chart will have a shift in the center of the charge distribution between the negative and the positive charges. So the leftmost face here will be slightly negatively charged and the rightmost face here will be slightly positively charged. So with the uh, dielectric inside the capacitor, we'll have something that looks a little like this. The charges on the plates have not changed, so the electric fields emanating from the positive plate will be the same in the air gap here, and similarly, the electric field intensity in the air gap next to the uh, negatively charged plate will be the same. But some of those field lines from the positive plate will terminate on this what we'll call fixed negative charge on this face. We say it's fixed negative charge because those that electron cloud can only move a little bit. Those electrons aren't free to move in this dielectric. So we can think of the charge as kind of as fixed on this face and a, uh, similarly a fixed positive charge on this other face where the electric field lines re-emanate from those fixed positive charges. So the net effect is a reduction of the electric field inside the dielectric. So now the voltage drop is going to be the electric field in the air gaps times the extent of the air gaps, which will just be the plate separation D minus the thickness of the dielectric, plus the electric field in the dielectric times the thickness of the dielectric, and E sub D will be less than E, and that's why we see this resulting lower voltage drop across the capacitor when the the energy stored in a capacitor is one half CV squared. We know that when we insert a dielectric in the air gap that the capacitance increases, but we also saw that the voltage decreases. If you work it out, you would find that the net result is that 
there is a lower stored energy when you have the dielectric inside the capacitor with the same charge on the plates. And that is because the capacitor has actually done work in pulling the dielectric inside the capacitor. If you think about what is happening when you start to put the put the dielectric in, it starts to become polarized so you get these fixed charges, negative here and positive here with these fields fringing like this. So there's a net force pulling down the dielectric due to these uh, fringing electric fields. And that work results in the lower voltage and the lower stored energy in the capacitor after the dielectric has gone into the capacitor.